So I'm actually glad to share to you guys that um, where medicine is headed, um, things are done in a specific way, all right? So unlike in the olden days where if somebody comes to the hospital and they need plasma proteins, they don't concentrate only plasma proteins and give to this patient, they give them whole blood, all right? So people are getting to find out that if a patient does not need whole blood and you are administering whole blood, there are a lot of what? disadvantages one of these disadvantages could be that there's uh, there could be iron overdose all right so plasma protein concentrates are basically like what a patient comes to the hospital they are in need of plasma proteins then you concentrate only plasma proteins you give to them okay so let's talk about how this is done you can see plasma plasma is not red as blood it's kind of like brownish light brownish or yellowish so, um, let's discuss this. We said that uh, these are purified and concentrated preparations of specific plasma proteins, okay? And they are used to treat various conditions, right? And some of these conditions could be that, um, examples, sorry, examples of the concentrated plasma proteins include albumin concentrate, you want to treat hypoalbuminemia. So the person has a low levels of albumin. Instead of giving whole blood, you concentrate just what? Albumin you give to them. You can also use it to treat shocks, burns. Then immunoglobin concentrate. We use it for treating what? Immunodeficiency. All right, the patient has a low immune system. So you concentrate immunoglobins and give them. Immunoglobin G, A, M, D, E, okay, and the rest. Then autoimmune disorders too, can, you can use immunoglobin concentrate to treat it. Then alpha-1 antitrypsin concentrates. That's if the person has an alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency. C1 esterase inhibitor concentrates. This is for hereditary word angioedema, all right? The indications, that's basically in situations where you need it. But we listed all these situations right here, okay? So let's just list them again. Hypoalbuminemia, immunodeficiency disorders, autoimmune disorders like Kawasaki disease, Guillain-Barre syndrome. If there's an alpha-1 antitrypsin deficiency, it is a hereditary or angioedema. All this you administer, this um, concentrates. So what are the contraindications? In patients that you should not use this word, plasma concentrate for it. If the patient has a known allergies to specific plasma proteins, they shouldn't do this. Uh, if there's a presence of what neutralizing antibodies to specific plasma proteins, they shouldn't do this. They're talking about the administration. Dosage and administration vary, and this is depending on the specific proteins which is needed. Okay? You should infuse slowly, usually over 15 to 16 minutes, right? Then, as you are infusing, you should monitor for adverse reactions, like if there are allergic reactions or thrombosis, right? So, then, talking about the advantages of this type of uh, plasma uh, concentrates, um, advantages is that what? You can target it for specific conditions. So, instead of administering whole blood, you just concentrate only plasma. You target the situation, okay? It will also reduce risk of uh, transmitting infectious agents, okay, that could be found in whole blood, okay? Then, convenient storage and handling, all right? Because preserving this plasma concentrate will be much more easier than you trying to preserve a whole blood, all right? Advantages, disadvantages, sorry. Because you are concentrating something now, you need much more of whole blood to concentrate the plasma from it, okay? So there's a high cost. There's a risk of what? Inhibitor formation. Antibodies could be formed against the plasma protein. It requires careful dosing and monitoring to spot out if there will be any other adverse what, um, reaction, right? You guys know it about plasma protein concentrate for transfusion. Right? Is it five now?